CataractCoach.com. Chop this dense cataract in the bag. You know, Faco Chop is ideal for the nucleus of this density. We're going to show you the whole case start to finish. This is our complete cataract case series. And you see we made the paracentesis. Good looking draping. Got all the eyelashes sequestered. That's some anesthetic going inside the eye. A little bit of uh, some oily stuff on the tear film. We should wash that off. Here comes the dispersive viscoelastic. Now, on a dense cataract, for sure, you want a very good coating of that coronal endothelium with the viscoelastic. Remember, dispersive agent and not spaghetti string. We want a nice, good wave of viscoelastic. Here's the main incision. Nicely made. Let's see the tunnel length. Like, it looks great. Important also on a dense cataract to have a good incision. You don't want to have Irish prolapse or things of that nature or leaky incision, but also we want to be able to float in that incision with the phaco probe to not cause a phaco wound burn. Starting off with the rexes. Now, what would you do differently in a case like this where the cataract is going to be denser than usual? Well, don't make a baby rexus. Get at least a five millimeter diameter capsule rexus. And here we're making that five, maybe at five and a half millimeters. Heck, if you're a beginning surgeon, I don't even mind if you make a six millimeter capsular rexus and it doesn't 100% overlap the optic, we'll live. But don't make a baby rexus. Now here comes the hydrodissection. Now the red reflex is good here. It may lessen, obviously, as we get this hydrodissection going. And we'll try to see if we can show you the nuclear density that's here. Now we get a little bit of a fluid wave, but I want to see that fluid wave go all across or behind that posterior capsule. So nice and easy. Look, plenty of hydrodissection. Trying to rotate it. Do we get a good rotation? That's pretty good. I'll take it. So a little more small aliquot there, just a little bit right in the center. That's dispersive viscoelastic just to protect that central cornea. Then here comes the phaco probe. Chop modes. We're looking at 40 cc's a minute to flow. We're looking at a vacuum of 400 millimeters mercury or higher. And let's see what we're going to do. Clean up some of that anterior cortical material. Buzzing with the phaco probe deeply. Chopper's going to go around the lens equator. And we chop, and look, we really have to put some effort in to really separate the pieces. Then we can bring up a piece, and if it doesn't come up, it's probably not fully separated. So see that? Both pieces kind of tilted up. That's because that first initial chop didn't propagate all the way through. So that's okay. We'll just take our time, and we'll claw this nucleus apart. So we didn't get a good chop on the first um, go, which is okay. This has still been broken up into smaller pieces. And now we can, again, sub-chop and take out small bits or bites at a time. Again, we're trying to operate more at the iris plane and not up against the corneal endothelium. Please don't ride the endo endothelium. You don't want to be that close. So we've got a good chunk of the nucleus out, probably about half of it. Here comes the other half going around with the chopper again, around the equator of that lens material, and we can chop that off. And so, again, this is not a brunescent cataract, but it has a pretty decent amount of nuclear density. So in my own clinic, in this part of Los Angeles, this is on the denser side for my patients. And so, cleaning off the, the last little bits of nucleus, taking those out nice and easy. Chopper, notice, in that safe position. And one last bit of uh, lens material that's a little bit chunky, we'll get that out. And then we can clean up the rest with the IA and the cortex removal. So that looks great. Total amount of energy plays inside was very, very low, actually. The CDE, or cumulative dissipated energy in this eye, was only about six units. And so for me, a typical case is more like two units, maybe three, and a very, very dense cataract for me would be 30 units or so of CDE. Now, you got to keep an eye on that number on the top right screen if you're using the Alcon machine, because if you put in a tremendous amount of energy, you're really going to cause some endothelial damage. And if you do have a dense cataract and you're beyond 10 or 15 on the CDE, it probably beho behooves you to recoat that central corneal endothelium with a little more dispersive viscoelastic just to protect it. Remember, viscoelastic is much cheaper than endothelial cells. So now filling up our capsular bag with our cohesive viscoelastic. Looks like a nice rexus there, beautifully centered. We'll get our lens delivered. It looks like a single piece. Acrylic lens going right inside. There you go. And this is for a pet target of about Plano. This is a 23 and a half diopter lens. This patient was just moderately hyperopic to begin with. And then we'll get that lens in good position and get the haptics opened up. And now you can see what you thought was a huge rexus is actually just about perfect. That's about a five to five and a half millimeter rexus. And of course, the optic of our IOL is six millimeters in diameter. Now let's get all that viscoelastic out going behind the IOL, 
get the flow on this uh, stage of your machine very high. So I really want to wash out all that viscoelastic, so high flow rate there. And now we can polish up the undersurface, that anterior capsule rim. You didn't think I'd forget that, did you? Now we'll clean it up as best that, as we can. We're obviously not going to go crazy on this. I don't want to damage the capsule bag. We have made such an incredible improvement in this patient's vision. Preoperative vision was about 20 out of 100 to 20 out of 200 range. And post-op, this patient was 2020 on post-op day one. Sealing up this incision, notice we didn't cause any fake wound burn. The incision looks nice and pristine. A little angle sweep there to make sure there's no retained viscoelastic. And we are just about done with this case. Let's check the incisions and make sure they're totally watertight. And that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I sincerely appreciate it.